I'm Chris. All right, let's talk about some more list formatting. Woo woo. All right, so we head on over to our Warrior Horses site. Uh, and the Warrior Horses, you know, they're always looking uh, to expand their, their enterprises, you know, internationally. And in order to do that, they have a series of leads or enemies they're evaluating to, uh, to potentially pick up to see if they can target them. So they've got a list here uh, called their leads list. Uh, where they've got a series of enemies they're kind of working through and tracking some information about them, including their threat level, right? Uh, you know, the primary weapon and kind of their status here. Now, we want to look at a couple of columns here, uh, and we're going to see how they can work together uh, to, you know, add some nice visualizations to this, but also to show how we can provide some localization. So, in order to do that, the first thing we want to do is this threat level is pretty boring, right? It's just a percentage column. Why don't we apply a format to that? Uh, so, I'm going to head over here to our formatting repo, and I'm going to go into column samples. And because it's a number column, I'm going to go down to where it says number first, right? So that's generally how these work. Go down to number, and I'm going to go to number level bar. And I'm just going to click on the JSON for that. And there is a copy button right here. I just copy that, and I come back here, and I go to my threat level column settings, format this column, go down to advanced mode, so I can just paste the JSON here, copy everything, and paste over it. And when I preview that, now I get this lovely thing, right? So now I've got kind of a, a number level bar here. Uh, the nice thing about this, and let's save that so before I forget, is that it is interactive, right? So I can click this and it will update, uh, you know, the things by about 25% um, at a time. So now we've got a nice threat level and that's cool, but we also want to do something with this threat level, right? So it's great. We've got uh, one suggested threat here for uh, poor Martha Washington, right? But what about the rest of these guys? You know, we could provide a threat, but what if we want to provide one when one is not provided, right, based on the threat level? Well, good news, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go to column settings. We're going to format this column. This is also a sample, but because I'm, we're going to build a little bit together, I'm not going to copy it off the site. And I'm just going to paste it here, and then we'll take a look at what it's actually doing. Let's scroll that over a little. Let's make this a little bigger as well. There we go. Let's preview it. And so what this is doing is nothing to ignore that. I grabbed the wrong one. Let's grab this one, which is very, very similar, but and it'll look exactly the same, except the difference is it's only English. So here's what's happening there. So the very first thing we do is we check to see, hey, is the current field filled out? And if it is, just use that, right? So we're going to continue to use the suggestion uh, that they have manually input. Otherwise, we're going to do it based on the threat level. Now, this is super fun to read. And it's about to get more fun. But the idea here is, right, it's just nested if statement. So we're saying if the threat level is greater than or equal to one, which is 100% in percentage fields, right? Percentage fields are zero to one. All right, then we're just going to put ye shall be trampled. We see that right up here and so on, right? So then we just keep going. So then our else condition is a secondary if. Uh, so this is kind of how we're doing. It's almost like a switch statement, but uh, with more characters. So even more fun. All right, so we go all the way down, and then we've got a default value here, which is zero. You know, anything lower than 25%, you're going to have a great day. So that's cool. All right, now what if I were to come in here and I'm coming in from Germany, right? Well, these threats don't do me a lot of good because uh, maybe I don't speak English, right? Um, I want to know what ye shall be trampled in German is. So one of the things we could do is let's check out. There's a value here to determine what language we currently are. So when it comes to localization, you don't apply a format uh, per language. So, you know, like page translations, you would provide a translated page and it actually exists as a separate page. It's all tied together and that's great. Uh, with formats, it's not near as clean. Uh, in fact, it's a little dirty and we're going to take a look at that, but we finally have an option here. Uh, but the difference is you will do it all inside a single format rather than having a format per language, which as you might guess, when you've got anything of mild complexity, uh, gets real fun. So what we're going to do is first we're going to see that we have a new magic string called at LCID. So that's the language code ID. All right, and we're going to just, in this case, we're just going to add it so we can see what it looks like. We're just adding it right before our message, right? So preview that and we can see, ah, so English United States is 1033, right? So 1033 is that language code. And that's cool. And if we save that just so we can continue to see that, if we head over to our site settings, we're going to go to our regional settings and we're just going to switch it to uh, German for now. I will go German from Germany. Hit OK. Hit OK again because apparently I didn't hit OK properly. Give that a second. And now 
I have found, uh, should I save, we'll close this, refresh, that sometimes it takes a few different refreshes to see that language code show up. Well, let's try it again. Oh, fable to toast, awesome. There it is, 1031. So now we can see that German is 1031, whereas English is 1033. Now, knowing that, we could do something with that. So let's take a look at what we might do with that. So if we come in here and we're gonna format this column again, and now we're gonna actually edit this slightly. Uh, so the main thing is we need to say, you know, ye shall be trampled. We want that in German when it's German, right? So we're going to add another if statement right here. I'm going to say if at LCID equals equals, or was it 1031, right? Then we want to do whatever German is, and then we'll say otherwise, you know, English is our default. So now we haven't filled in what the German is, but this is kind of the idea here. And so we could take this exact piece here. And we could copy that and we could paste it for each one of these and so on, right? We'll just do the ye shall be trampled for now uh, so that we don't have to watch us translate all of them. Now, if you head on over to Bing and you search for Google Translate, well, you get the Bing translator, so that's helpful. So we're going to type that. We're going to get the German equivalent um, or, you know, if you actually speak German, it's whatever this uh, exciting version of that is. Um, and we're going to paste that in here. And we're going to say ye shall be trampled is ye Fusen I can't speak German. There we go. All right, so there we go. And if we preview that, now we see uh, in German, we get the German translation rather than the English. The other ones, we haven't put that on there, so they're still coming back with the only option we've given them, which is pretty awesome, right? So if we were go a little further with that, and I'm just going to copy it, so I've gone ahead and translated each of these, so we don't have to watch me paste all of that. We'll preview that, and now we've got German for all, except for the one that we provided, since we're providing just the direct value they typed. But you can start to see this is a little intense, right? Uh, not only am I doing if statements for the threat level, now I've got if statements inside the results for the individual language code. But wait, there's more! How exciting! So now if we come back and we go to our site settings, and what if, uh, you know, we, we just pick, instead of German from Germany, we pick German from Austria. Right, you know, and uh, we'll hit OK here. We're going to post back, so I'll hit OK. Give that a second, and now let's refresh that. And we should see it'll take a minute. Are we going to save our? Uh, no, we didn't. So let's go back here and add it. We need to format this column. When I pasted that, I took out our LCID. So let's put that back in. So add LCID plus. Colon, bang, boop, boop. There we go. Now we have that back in so we can see what the LCID value is. You can see it's still coming back. It's 1031 German. So let's refresh and see if we get German for Austria. There it is. German from Austria is 3079. And you'll notice that it is all English. So here comes the next fun part, right? So the fun part here is that uh, each one of those in this list has a different language code. And because we don't have a locale where we might be able to split it and say like, you know, E and US or, you know, uh, DE slash DE uh, for German, Germany, that kind of stuff. And then we can just look at the first part. We have to account for all of these different codes, right? And Germany alone has uh, whatever, how many of these are, five. So it gets a little nuts, it gets a little ugly. But again, considering a couple of weeks ago, we had absolutely nothing we could do. This is certainly better than nothing. Uh, but I'm certainly hoping for some improvements in this area. But in order to handle something like that, we would have to say, or with our two pipes at LCID equals equals, right? And what was it? Uh, right, 3079, right? So then we'd say 3079, then do the German, right? And there it is, right? And then you might, you know, you might have a different translation that's specific the targets Austria, right? Austrian German versus uh, German German. And so in that case, this would be great for you. But for everyone else that just wants generic German targeted for all different uh, regions where German is spoken, uh, this is going to get a little crazy. So that's how you kind of do that. So that's our localization. Now let's wrap it up here and take a look at uh, what we can find out more about that. So let's jump over to our slides again. All right. So again, one format per column, um, if it's column format or per view, if it's a view format. Um, localization is done inside the format. That's an important distinction because it kind of works differently than uh, the rest of things in SharePoint, uh, which in some ways means it works like the rest of it because inconsistency is the main consistency. There you go. Uh, 
And then, of course, the other thing to note is when you're looking up these, a lot of times you'll find the hex value for the LCID because LCID is generally considered to be a hex value. But uh, in this case, it is the decimal value of the hex value. So uh, if you find one of those hex lists, just get out your uh, calculator and switch it over to scientific. And then the last thing is, again, that thing we pointed out there about all the different regions you'll have to account for. All right, last thing here is here's some samples. So these samples, the number level bar, number localization, and there's also a personal lo person localization. We'll show you how to do localization with person fields are all available as part of that sample repo. And that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> all right. All well, right. the horses uh, have <laughs> spoken. Thank you, Chris. Uh, excellent job. Very, very cool how we can do that. Thank you.